YouTube as it going the goat house is back with some way too early post free agency 2020 NFL predictions do this video at this time every single year we'll update these after the draft as well uh, but two separate videos one covering AFC divisions and one covering the NFC divisions uh, and the NFC video will shortly follow this one so this one's covering the AFC uh, yeah this is just kind of fun to do fun to see how I view teams after free agency Obviously, these aren't final predictions, and obviously the draft impacts these things in a major way. Uh, we will be live during the NFL draft. April 23rd is when it all starts right here, live on YouTube. We're live, we were live last year, excited to do it again this year. We have two channels. Please subscribe to both, trying to reach that 50K by the draft. Uh, full NFL content, uh, and then follow our Twitter. Always talking draft. We're going to talk uh, live during the, the later rounds there on Twitter as well. Uh, and a fan vote and mock draft going on there right now. We'll reveal your guys' picks in a video before the draft. Uh, anything you need, any type of link you need, you'll find it in the description in the comments, uh, as well as our podcast. Uh, you know, quite a few episodes out now. We're on Apple, Apple and we're on Spotify. Uh, let's start with the AFC East. Again, not final predictions. Uh, right now here on the 1st of April is when I'm recording this post free agency and there's even some solid free agents left uh so number four at this moment for the AFC East and the AFC East was pretty tough except for number one number one was pretty easy um but at this moment maybe the the team that could be impacted or driven up kind of rankings like these by the draft you know probably that number one team that falls under that category but at number four for right now it is the Miami Dolphins uh mainly because they're still lacking in the offensive line department there you know they probably can win with Ryan Fitzpatrick honestly uh but that offensive line you know they're not going to have major improvements even though on the defensive side they did have some pretty big improvements love the Kyle Van Noy signing uh but this team with a ton of picks uh, and they may trade away some picks. You know, there's rumors they can move up to number one, and Joe Burrow will impact them that much more. Uh, so this is a team that we'll come back and see after the draft. We expect them to get bumped up, you know, quite a bit, you know. Uh, but we, that's ex what's expected. You know, the draft, the beauty of the draft is, um, you know, so unpredictable at times. Nothing's guaranteed. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but just compare the other teams, like number three, uh, I have the Jets. And the reason the Jets are ahead of the Dolphins uh, is because, I, you know, the, even though the Dolphins improved big time on defense, this Jets defense is going to be pretty good this year. It's going to be pretty damn good. Uh, arguably the, one of the best safety duos in football. Uh, you know, love the linebacker unit. They're adding to that. They're getting creative, you know, adding a guy like Patrick Owoso from the Ravens. It's kind of going to be their utility linebacker. They're going to be able to give different looks because of that. And you look, I guess it depends on Quinn Williams, too. He got in trouble this offseason. We'll, we'll see if he's on the field. I expect him on the field for at least the majority of the season. Uh, but that's a huge impact guy. I mean, that was an elite prospect in the draft, and he's only played one year. Um, you know, he, he's going to impact his team in big ways. The defensive line, defensive front's pretty good, too. Uh, so the difference between the Jets and the Dolphins at this moment is not much, but it's the Jets' defense. Uh, that's where it's at. The Dolphins' defense won't be far behind, but that's the difference. But the, the way the Dolphins are pretty, their layout is in the draft, uh, they definitely can jump the Jets. I'm not a huge Sam Darnold believer, but I do expect a jump up. They do need to get a, a, some receivers in the draft, hopefully a top-tier receiver, along with some of the mid-rounds receivers. That's not a team that could afford to wait because the draft class is deep. So we'll see what they do there. But I like that defense. That's a, it's a defense on the rise, still some spots to fill. And then we can reveal one and two at the same time. Here, uh, I still get, so basically two, three, four. You can mix any way you want, R really. You can make the case, I should say. Uh, but I still got the Patriots at two because of coaching. Uh, the secondary is still arguably the best in football. Um, you know, the the front seven could actually struggle a bit, and that's that's what's tough. Uh, you know, I view Jared Sidham as the quarterback right now, which I actually can trust. Um, a, a little bit, especially with that, that coaching staff. They'll have to do a better job getting some weapons. I do like the running back room, though. But still, I just give the Patriots the edge over those teams at this moment. The draft obviously can change things, and some more free agency signings can change things. The Bills are no question number one right now. By far the best team, the best roster uh, in the AFC East at this moment on both sides of the ball. Um, you know, that defense is going to be a top tier defense. Hopefully, they can add a little more pass rush. Uh, but that secondary is top tier. The linebacker unit's top tier. Uh, across the defensive line, they're looking pretty good there as well. Ed Oliver can take that next up. Uh, I was very on high on him 
last year's draft, but I was one to say he's not going to be crazy good right away. It's one because Houston had him playing some, you know, the playing the wrong positions. A lot of nose tackle. He's not a nose tackle. Um, so that was a guy I expected to be, even though he, I wouldn't call him quiet. He was pretty good, made an impact, but somewhat quiet for a top tier prospect. Now is the time we're going to start to see him climb up. So he's going to be even better. Um, yeah, and the Bills offense adding digs. The offensive line got a bu- bunch better last year, way better last year. So I expect it to slightly get better at the worst. You know, at the worst, stay the same, and that's good enough this year, but it should get better. Um, you know, it, it, this is the best team in the division at this moment, and it's really not even close. So those are my placings post free agency, pre draft. And something to keep in mind is it's not. You know, like it was 10, 15 years ago, where you have to let this, these these rookies sit and learn a little bit. These guys you get in the draft make an instant impact and pretty big ones. So that that could change a lot. It can, it can change a lot. And of course, the schedules aren't even out yet, so that changes a lot as well. And we'll do record predictions and all that at the right time. This is just kind of fun to see after free agency. Uh, AFC North. Uh, so at fourth. In the, in the AFC North here for me. I still got the Bengals. I expect them to go Joe Burrow. Uh, the offensive line is still a question. You know, Joe Burrow instantly makes them, um, you know, a much, much, much better team than last year, a team that can compete, win games. Uh, the offensive line is still a question mark right now. Uh, it should get better kind of by default, adding Jonah Williams back in there. Hopefully he can stay healthy. Uh, but, yeah, they they filled they did add some players and get better on defense. It's a tough division, and there's still some holes that they, they definitely need to f- to fill uh, to jump up a little bit here in a, in a video like this, and we'll see if they definitely can do that, you know, having early picks in each of the rounds, obviously. so uh, But they're coming in a fourth place for right now post-free agency. And I got the Browns at number three. Uh, the Browns, we expected, you know, most people expected to possibly be a playoff team last year. Can they be that team this year? I'd say they can, but there, there's still some holes they need to, to fill. Uh, offensive line is a big reason for pretty good teams to – you know, be stopped short of where, where their expectations are at. And that's still, the, the Browns got better, but that's still a problem for the Browns at this given moment, and that could slow them down a little bit. Uh, and, and then looking at the defensive side, um, solid defense, solid young defense. You you could get better in some spots, but it's definitely a defense on the rise. Uh, but that'll kind of be, you know, we'll see one and two now. One and two are very tight. You know, it was a tough decision between one and two, really, because, Steelers got that top tier defense, and they kind of get better getting Ben Big Ben back, uh, you know. So they definitely compete for that one spot, uh, and that's kind of the, the difference between maybe a Steelers and a Browns team is just the defense of the Steelers. You know, I think the Steelers offense can match or better the Browns offense, and their defense is at a much better spot. Not that I dislike the Browns defense, it's just the Steelers defense is one of the best in football. Um, and they could be again this year. So the Steelers are at two. Hopefully Big Ben stays healthy. Um, you know, they, they may, you know, offense line isn't a giant need, but that's something that, you know, it's not the same as it used to be. Always one of the top-tier offensive lines. Uh, and that, you know, that's kind of the difference with the Ravens. Yeah, the D- Ravens did lose Marshall to retirement. I think they'll be able to replace him. I think they'll be okay. It's a very well-coached, very solid offensive line. You know, Lamar Jackson you know, still going to be a problem. You know, is he going to do as much? I can't say, you know, I can't guarantee anything there, but he's still going to be a good player, still going to be a problem. Uh, And then they got a lot of young players here and there uh, that are going to just get better just by improving and progressing. And then looking at the defensive side, they could use some things here and there, but I like how they went and improved the defensive line. They're actually going to get some pressure from the actual defense line or 3-4, which they have not been able to get in some time here. Uh, So that's great, and they still have – uh, one of the maybe the best secondary in football, so that helps quite a, quite a bit there too. So I still like the Ravens one, a close two in the Steelers, uh, and the Browns and the Bengals could make a giant jump here uh, with a little bit of free agency left, but mainly the draft. Uh, but they they got they do need to make that jump, so we'll see if they can do that. That's my AFC North predictions at this uh, way too early time here. Uh, the AFC South, this one. Um, you know, for all the divisions, this one was probably one of the easier ones, in my opinion. You know, this one I didn't have to think too much about. You know, I was pretty much set. Uh, and coming in number four is going to be the Jags. It feels like they're kind of dipping their foot in the rebuild mode, you know, pool there. You know, they're trying to they're they're trying to gather picks. It's pretty obvious they want to, you know, kind of reset a little bit. Uh, but some signings kind of make that a little confusing. But, you know, I, Gardner Minshew, more impressive than expected. Uh, he can take a next jump. They could actually get a quarterback in the draft, perhaps. Uh, but it sounds like Minshew, Gardner Minshew is the guy they're going to go with. 
I'm not even though yeah, impressed, has potential. I'm not super thrilled about that. That's not, you know, it's they're not he's not going to go out and win a bunch of games for them. And looking at the rest of the teams, yeah, the receiver unit mediocre, the offensive line um, offense line I'm okay with. They could use one more starting piece, maybe in the left tackle. You know, Robinson still yeah, has his ups and downs. Uh, running back Fournette looks pretty solid last year. Uh, you know, that maybe that's their strength of their offense, but there's they're a little a little quiet on the offense, I guess. And you look at the defense, you know, they traded some pieces away. There's a lot of holes. Uh, I mean down the middle and down the middle and at corner. You know, they're pretty much set at edge, and that's kinda Brings up another debate. Is Yannick Ngakwe going to be in there? I do, I'm a big fan of Josh Allen, though, so they're going to get some pressure either way. Um, but, yeah, they added Joe Schobert, too. But it's just team. Just this team doesn't really have enough right now and just weak in some very important spots. So, to me, it was a no-brainer they were number four. It was a no-brainer that the Texans were at number three. Uh, this team got worse this offseason. You know, it, it's a team... That was pretty inconsistent in the regular season last year as it was. You know, Watson, you could say, can, can continue to get better because, you know, he's Deshaun Watson. He's, he's young. He hasn't been in the league that long. Uh, but taking guys away like Hopkins, you know, taking him away. The offensive line got better, but how much better? It's still on the weaker side of the NFL. Um, you know, there's just not enough on that team besides Deshaun Watson. You look at the defense. Yeah, J.J. Watt can still make a pretty solid impact. He's nowhere near the same as he once was. The injuries are piling up. So, I mean, he's definitely an impact player, but... Uh, I like their inside linebackers, no edge rush in the 3-4, uh, and the defensive back, it, you know, the, the, secondary is, the secondary is full of just average to below average guys there. So it's really on Deshaun Watson, and then maybe guys like J.J. Watt and uh, y- you know Cunningham McKinney, who I like there on the inside of the defense. And Will Fuller, a big Will Fuller fan too, but I mean, he, he's got to stay healthy, and he needs some help, he needs some help back there. So Texans definitely took, took a step down here at this given time here after free agency. Uh, and then number number one and number two is pretty close, but at this moment I felt pretty good about where I had them. Uh, I got the Colts at two and the Titans at number one. I, I think the Titans are just the just the better roster, the better team, um, you know, better built throughout you know the whole roster. What I'm getting at, uh, yeah, I guess some people maybe doubt Tannehill. Maybe that was a fluke season. I you know I've seen enough where it's not a fluke season. I just hope he stays healthy. Uh, Derrick Henry having one of the best backs in football. The receiver unit is getting better. They got better with AJ Brown last year. He can continue to get better. Uh, pretty dominant rookie season as well. Um, you know, just and then looking at the defense. You know, they the defense was very solid. Just pretty much needed to add some pass rush. They had a guy like Vic Beasley, uh, who I think really fits. You know, it's not going to make this crazy impact, but I think he really fits this three four defense, this Vrabel defense that he hasn't got a chance to play in yet. He's been playing in a four three. Uh, so he definitely makes them better. Not a giant impact, but definitely makes them better. Uh, and they're just young throughout, too. I, I think one of the more balanced rosters in football and young throughout. The Colts, uh, yeah, they got better. They add Phillip Rivers to get better at quarterback. But how much do they get better? You know, turnover turnover problem on a very good Chargers team last year. You look at the defense. You look at the receivers he had, the running backs he had, uh, you know, the tight end as well. You know, and, and he just continued to turn the ball over and kind of cost them. So, you know, now he gets the offensive line he didn't have with, with the Chargers, but he doesn't have the receivers he had with the Chargers. He doesn't quite have the defense. The Colts defense should take a step up this year, but doesn't have quite quite have that same defense, which matters uh, for how much time you're on the field as a quarterback, as an offense. Um, so question marks with Phillip Rivers. They definitely get better on defense, though, with a guy like DeForest Buckner. Uh, guys like Rocky Sin can step up. Got some young guys here and there, but how much better than they get? Um, you know, that they could maybe they can be a little more flashy in the Titans, and that can – Cause some big wins, you know, in big games. You know, the Titans to me, just evaluating the team, evaluating the roster, uh, are just is just way, you know, not way better, but it's it's clear to me, it's uh, it's a better roster. It's more balanced of a roster. So right now, that's where I have the AFC South, and then we're moving on to the AFC West here. The, one of the toughest ones, maybe the even you know, counting the NFC, which we'll do that separate video. Uh, the AFC West. Uh, it is tough. It's tough to rank here at this time. And number four, I believe number four, ha- I give them a chance to finish first in this division. Uh, but number four, uh, I'm giving it to the Raiders right now. Uh, and that's because you look, you evaluate this this Raiders roster, and they, they got it to a point where there's really no giant holes besides receiver which they do have two first round picks so we can come back after the draft and two first round picks could really impact a team because like I said you know rookies impact a team now more than ever um so we can come back and really boost the Raiders up uh but it's a well 
it's a well you know put together team there. Look at the roster. There's really no holes. Yeah, you could use you could use a better corner. You could use a safety with Jonathan Abram, I suppose. I mean, you know, uh, but for the most part, there's a lot more teams with a lot more holes. Is what I'm getting at. But uh, it's a tough division. I got three teams better right now. Another thing is there's nothing there's nothing elite, anywhere really near elite about this Raiders team. There's no top tier play anywhere. I know Josh Jacobs could be a top 10 running back. I wouldn't call him a top tier game changer. Uh, at the quarterback position, there could be a change at some point. Yeah, there, there's, there's, we need a little more. Obviously, they're lacking at the receiver. I like Darren Waller. Um, you know, you look at the defense, Max Crosby was phenomenal for a rookie. Uh, but there, there's, you know, and Corey Littleton can be big time, but there's not, there's, you know, all these really good teams, these teams that just win these types of divisions or make the playoffs. They got something, and somebody can break out and be that, but they just don't have that player or that unit right now. That's really what I'm looking for, that unit. So that's kind of what they're lacking. Uh, but again, they could definitely get better here with uh, some free agents available, but mainly the draft. They have two first-round picks. Uh, number three is the Chargers. They're still in the market for a quarterback and left tackle. Maybe that's not. Maybe that's why they're not higher. Uh, this defense will be top tier. This could very well can be an elite defense. It's balanced all the way through. Could use an outside linebacker here uh but uh, i mean arguably one of the best uh, secondaries in football uh the pass rush uh not just from the outside with bosa and ingram uh but with the inside with linval joseph and jerry tillery uh, i mean the defense it's well coached defense too it's good this defense alone is going to win them football games this defense alone will win them football game i mean you look at that bears defense a couple years ago brought that trubisky offense to the playoffs it was a dominant season for them and it was because the defense pretty much carried them there uh and that and you know you're argument why are the Chargers not four because they don't have a quarterback left tackle well this defense alone could bring them to where they need to be or close to where they want to go uh, but then you add in that Tyrod Taylor as their quarterback right now and to me he can play he can win them games he probably would have won them more games last year than Phillip Rivers did uh, and they have weapons on offense yeah you need a left tackle pretty bad we'll see what they do in the draft it's gonna be very interesting to see what they do we'll see if they try to grab somebody in free agency as well adding a Cam Newton makes them better that's a possibility. But, yeah, that defense will get them somewhere for sure, the way the team sits. Uh, and the offense isn't, you know, it, it could be a lot worse, you know. Um, I mean, I'm a little worried about the play calling, you know, and the game plan. That, that was more of my concern last year, I guess, in the offensive side. I thought the coach, some coaches would be fired. Um, so that, I guess, is a little bit of concern. Uh, but as of now, I got them at three, a close three. They're very tight. I mean, two, three, four, very tight. I, I like this Broncos team, though. I got them at two. The Chiefs at one. Shouldn't be no surprise. Uh, I, I like this Broncos team. And this team was so close to having a pretty damn good record last year, which is crazy with the quarterback changes they went through. And Drew Locke, if you remember the pre-draft process last year, I'm a big Drew Locke fan. You know, he's not going to be this crazy you know, Pro Bowl quarter, you know, elite quarterback or anything. But I like Drew Locke. You know, he's going to get better. He's going to be a very solid quarterback. Um, you know, he's going to get better for them. And you see him in a limited time. Help the Broncos made them better. Cortland Sutton's a guy that's going to continue to get better. I was very high on him, too. Um, you know, and then adding Melvin Gordon with Phillip Lindsay. You know, that, that's a great running back duo. Maybe the best in football. Um, you know, the offense line could use maybe one more piece. You need another receiver piece in there. Uh, the defense will be playing at a high level. Vic Fangio. People forget Bradley Chubb missed most of last year, pretty much all of last year. And uh, Bradley Chubb is a special player. People forget that. It's a special player right there. So him and Von Miller uh, are, are going to be terrors for offensive lines there. Uh, maybe the best duo in football, perhaps. Uh, in the secondary, yeah, they could get better at corner. But I like this team. It's, it's a balanced team. And it's going to have... It's going to have more than you think, uh, you know, more than most people think. Uh, so I got them at two for now, but, yeah, the Chargers kind of, depending on the quarterback, but getting that quarterback in at left tackle definitely could make their way up. As good as that defense is, the Chargers could make their way up to number one on this because the Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs are most likely one. They're the number one for right now, uh, even though they stay the same. I don't like when teams stay the same, even good teams. You know, why didn't they repeat what they did last last year? It's because they stayed about the same, and teams have game film. Teams have experience on you. They're going to play you again. Coaches are going to see you again. Players are going to see you again. It's tough to repeat those things for those reasons. So the Chiefs are pretty much staying the same, uh, but they do have the best player, the best quarterback in football who is still very young and still – uh, and it's very scary that he's getting better. So that would be the reason there. 
Um, you know, I think this defense can continue to get better too. We saw it get better along the way last year. First year defense coordinator in Spagnola switched into a four three, uh, and you know, and they can actually continue to get better uh, just kind of by default, just by just learning more and being there. And they have the draft, of course, too. So the Chiefs right now are no brainer one. I think even though I have the Broncos at two, uh, the Chargers have a pretty good chance of competing with the Chiefs. I think the Broncos do too. If they add some big-time receiver in the draft, that's an instant impact, which is a bunch of those in the draft. With Cortland Sutton, it's going to make the whole the Drew Locke, the whole offense a lot better. And the Raiders with two first-round picks. I mean, this division is ridiculous. So uh, this this is a, yeah this is one of the best, maybe the best in football. Definitely the best in the AFC, in my opinion, no question. Because you look at the Raiders down there at four, that's a pretty good team. Like I said, there's not a whole bunch of giant holes. Yeah, yeah, receiver maybe. But after that, and it's going to be so easy to fill that uh it, you know I would actually almost love for them to take you know, double up on the receivers in, in the in the first round that'd be pretty crazy uh we'll see what happens there I'm excited to see that excited to see what you know the Chargers and the Raiders you know two teams I'm you know really two top top of the line NFL teams that I, you know I'm really looking forward to their plan you know it's 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 a mystery really but I, I can't wait to see what they what they do and if they improve um, so this is the AFC video shortly after, maybe by the time you listen to this, the NFC video is already up, but they're going to do the same thing for the NFC teams. Uh, and again, this is post free agency, free agency, uh, some big free agents still yet to sign and we got the whole draft to get to. So things will change. I think the main thing is the schedule's not out yet either. Cause knowing the schedule is a huge part. So this is kind of just for fun and just get an idea of my thoughts on the teams after free agency and what it could look like. So a lot will change and I'm excited to cover all this. And it's, it's NFL draft season, so I'm really pumped about that, uh, you know, getting through these types of videos, so full focus on the NFL draft. So hopefully you can join us for that. A couple of live streams coming up uh, to get ready for the draft as well. We'll be live during the NFL draft. So a lot going on here at the Goat House. Appreciate you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow our Twitter, check out our podcast. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.